Okay, I think I pretty well have this dialed in. And I've only got a few more left to make anyway. I've been sitting here watching it make them. With uh, my son Andy. He was over. We were checking it out. Okay, so I'm going to record this one all the way through. Uh, I'll see if I can't call out the uh, speeds and feeds. Uh, they don't change too drastically. They're drastically different than what they were when I was doing these before. But uh, Okay, let's see here. Yeah, I'll zoom in here in just a second. I have this one set up as G56, this one set up as G57. I'm using the same code that I used last time I did these, uh, but I have changed it and tweaked it a bit. Cycle time's just under five and a half minutes. So this is 800 RPM at 11 thou per rev. This whole uh, program does uh, inch per rev. So this is still 800 at uh, 11 thou. The tack on the power draw bar says it's 750. So, it's somewhere in that neck of the woods. This is 800 RPM at 6 thousandths per rev. Back to 11 thou per rev. And I'd have to check the code. I think these are maybe 20 thou cuts, maybe 25 off the diameter. I haven't even gone in and looked at really. I guess I should. Maybe I'll check it and I'll put it as a put it up on the screen.
Town. This final cat, it goes 6,000 per revolution up until the arc, and then it changes to 11,000 per rev. Nice. I might hit it with a little bit of Scotch Brite. Um, when I do the other side, on the other one, I'll, I'll grab it from here and then come up and cut this, and then I can Scotch Brite the whole thing. Uh, this is the only surface I'm not real thrilled with, and that could simply be because of the uh, angle of the cutter. But uh, that's uh, that's not a very Important that just sits the shelf of the bearing right there. So dimensionally, I'm concerned with this and the ID. The OD here has a rubber seal, so lots of room for uh, discrepancy there. Um, I'm shooting for uh, 1.73 or 1.373 rather. And I'm at uh, just a hair over three, three and a half. And granted, these are calipers. And 60, 61 is what I'm shooting for here, and I'm right in between them. And that's got to fit over that. Nice. I'm loving that. Cool. So, a little uh, shout out to my awesome wife. It's our anniversary today. We're going to the melting pot for dinner soon, four o'clock. But uh, she's like, "Yeah, go have fun in the shop." All right, pretty pleased with that. airspace here is because it's set up right now to do two different bearing adapters, two different lengths of bearing adapters. So by setting it 80,000 with an 80,000 offset, I can do the bearing adapter I'm working on now and that's why there's more or less 80,000 worth of air being cut. Uh, if I get rid of that 80,000 offset, it will cut the shorter ones for the 620. And you can see there, if I didn't do that chamfer, which it did on the first one I did, it will crash because it'll take such a big bite uh, out of that uh, corner on the ID there. And this just happened, these arc, arcs 
just happens to be the way Mach 3 does it. You know, yes, there's other ways you could go in and do a step and then do a single or one or two cleanup arcs. But uh, this is, I'm just working with the wizards on Mach 3. Maybe when I finally get around to learning uh, Fusion for the lathe, I'll be able to change this up. RPM at 7,000 per rev. It's maybe a 10,000 step to cut. I figured I'd uh, show a little comparison here. Okay, ignore the surface rust. That uh, that comes right off with Scotch Brite. But okay, these are the ones that I made previously doing mill turn. And you can see how much chatter I was getting on the inside there. That gets Loctited to the spindle, so uh, you know these were just barely I, physically usable. No problem there. Just cosmetically, I wasn't real thrilled with them. Oh. And this is the same same thing, not quite as bad inside there. Oh yeah, it's bad up top there. I'm not positive if the uh, texture's coming out. These are uh, the turning marks, or a little bit more uh, pronounced on that. And granted, this one I hit with just a couple seconds of uh, emery cloth and then uh, scotch bright. And that gets rid of uh, the, 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 it's got almost kind of a scratchy, like there's tiny little, really, really tiny burrs sticking up, you know. Uh, and the scotch spray just knocks it right back down and makes it perfectly smooth. So this is, uh, I mean, that's, that's super, super nice right there. And then. You can see my inside. No chatter. Oh, I'm just super pleased with uh, how these are coming out. So I've got a few more to do. I'm going to keep a bunch of the blanks. Not uh, these, but the the full blank. Because uh, the 620 ones. <laughs> oops. 
the 620s are short like this, uh, so I can modify these or make them. I can modify these or make them like that. The blanks, that is. And then the Toyota has a smaller diameter uh, and pretty short like that too. So I can use those blanks for three different bearing adapters, um, all all the same bearing. That's part of the reason why, the, you know, they're all they're all used to put the same bearing on the same spindle. It's just the 620 has a taller boss, so this needs to be shorter. This is a this is a I think that's a 521. Yeah. Uh, goes on there that adapts the bearing and I've shown this all before but a lot of new subscribers and stuff like that so a bunch of new people watching this stuff so um, so anyway those can almost get uh, scrapped and then the Toyota puts a five lug Toyota hub onto this uh, spindle and it has to be a smaller because the uh, wheel seal is different so that's a scrap one and I'm sure I've done enough footage of of these so that's all I wanted for now